Hello. So today we will discuss yet another algorithm for string matching called Rabin Karp string matching algorithm. Uh, let me remind you the problem was that you are given a text string over some symbol set on some symbol set sigma to have another string we call pattern string. And we are trying to find out if there is a position a i such that a i through a i plus m minus 1 is same as p. Now, in this approach, we are going to transform these strings into numbers and then we will compare numbers. So, let us define uh, a number n p corresponding to string p in the following fashion. Let us suppose the number of symbols are d, then we can treat each of these symbols. So, we can think of sigma as 0. Um, uh, 0, 1, 2 through d minus 1. So, in a base d system, we have these d basic symbols and then we can define a number associated with this string as uh, b m into d power 0 plus b m minus 1 into d power 1 up to b 1 into d power m minus 1. So, if we so we are treating this as a, a number on base d. Now, we can also define a number n s, which is the number due to symbols a s, a s plus 1 through a s plus m minus 1 and that as we just did, we will have a s into d power m minus 1, a s minus 1 d power m minus 2 a s plus m minus 1 to d power naught. Now, obviously, <coughs> the string a s through a s plus m minus 1 can match p if and only if, if and only if n p is n s. So, we have all the information about the string in the corresponding number. Hence, this can certainly be a possible method to perform string matching. But in general, the numbers we are dealing with may be very large. A single arithmetic operation cannot be considered a unit operation or a constant time operation if we are dealing with a very large numbers because they may not even be representable in uh, our uh, system in which we are trying to program such an algorithm. So, we have to remedy that problem and for that what we will do is we will do a hashing on these numbers. So, let us suppose so, so consider some number consider uh, some number q. We have a number q and we are going to map every number say n p to n p prime, which is n p mod q. 
by this we simply mean the remainder of n p when divided by q. Similarly, we will have n s map to n s prime, which is same as n s modulo q. Now, if we take certainly we have lost certain information here, once that we have re, uh, replaced a number original number by only the uh, remainder with respect to a q. So, if the two numbers are equal that is to say if n s is equal to n p, then we can be sure that these two will also be equal there is no doubt about it. But what happens when they are not equal? If they are not equal, then still there is a possibility that these two may be equal. Hence, we cannot for sure say that whenever this n s and n p meet, they match, they are equal, that would mean that we have found the pattern, we cannot say. So, what is it that we can certainly say. So, so, here is one observation that if n s is equal to rather if pattern a s through a s plus m minus 1 is equal to p, then we know that n s prime is equal to n p prime. But if this pattern a s through a or rather I would not put uh, any sign around it. But if the pattern A s through A s plus m minus 1 is not equal to p, then what is the chance that these two still will be equal? Now, since we have only q possible values for a remainder. So, if spread over all possible values, there is only one chance in q that even when these two are distinct, these two will meet. So, assume that this is some random string different from p, then we can say then n s prime is not equal to n p prime with probability. 1 minus 1 over q. Okay. Only 1 in q chance is there that this still may be equal, otherwise they will not be. So, if I am going to use this test, then I can not be sure that indeed the two patterns are equal or not, but with a very high probability provided q is large. I will generally be right, but with a small probability there may be a false alarm. In case there is a false alarm, what we should be doing is we should actually go ahead and whenever we find that there is a matching here, we should go and test whether indeed the two strings are equal or not, because for sure we have a match or not that can be decided only by matching the pattern. But the advantage is that with a very small probability, it will be a false alarm. Hence, we will not be testing this too often. Hence, as a result, we may be able to perform well in, the, in this approach in finding a pattern. 
Okay. So, now we will define a number. Let us first define for a convenience define symbol a naught to be 0 and define n p prime equal to a naught a 1 a m minus 1. Uh, sorry, this will be n prime 0, a 0 modulo q. Now, we will first try to compute n 0 prime and n p prime, which we have already described. Okay. So, let us compute n p prime. and then 4 i equal to 1 to m n p prime will be uh, b star n p prime mod q plus a i. So, this is actually going, this is going to raise the power of d for the current number and at the next position, it is going to to m. So, i equal to 1 to m and uh, so, each time we are going to multiply the current number raise its position from unit to dth level by raising it by multiplying by d adding a i and then in each step though we are going to compute modulo d to ensure that in each arithmetic operation, the numbers that we are dealing with are within q. Now, similarly, okay, so we return n p prime. Computation of n 0 prime, once again we will start with 0 and for equal to 1 to m minus 1. We will do the same thing, we will compute n 0 prime as n 0 prime times d modulo q and then note that we are dealing with the symbols of p. So, this should have been b i, this is b i and this is a i. mod q. Return n 0 prime. So, actually n 0 prime is the number generated by first m minus 1 symbols. Now, we have to move from, let us just ta take a look at the string. So, we have a 1, a 2, a m minus 1, a m, a m plus 1. 
so on. So, suppose at some point we are here at uh, a s through a s plus m minus 1. Suppose our current variable gives us the, the number associated with these m symbols. And then we are interested in finding out the number corresponding to the next m consecutive symbols, which would be due to a s plus 1 through a s plus m. So, the advantage we have in, in converting this into a number is that the number that we have here, we can remove the contribution of a s, which is a s into d to the power m minus 1. Subtracting that will give me the number corresponding to this. I will raise that by d and then add a s m plus a s plus m. That will immediately give me the number associated with this and this requires only two operations. Hence, in a constant amount of time, we can move from this number to the next number. So, this is what we are going to exploit. So, let us say we have we have a flag which indicates that we have found a match which is false to begin with. Uh, we have already described how to compute compute uh, n 0 prime and compute n p prime, which is corresponding to the pattern string. And now, we will proceed as long as we do not find the flag to be true or we have reached the limit, after which the, you do not have m consecutive symbols left in the text string. So, we will say while, okay, so we will use a, a counter and let us say we use a loop, while loop as long as flag is false and j is less than or equal to n minus m plus 1, because j equal to n minus m plus 1 will still give me uh, m symbols. So, we will see. Now, first thing we do is we extend the number to the next position. So, we will notice that we had already chosen a number associated with only m minus 1 symbols. We will move on to the next symbol and that is what we are going to do. So, let us take uh, x uh, I need to set my variable x to n 0 prime there we will compute x to be x minus d to the power uh, m minus 1 into a j. Note that currently we are looking at the so, I need to, this is ok. We are going to remove the contribution of a 0. This we do well. Let us first compute 
the mod of this mod of this and to that we will add a j plus m that will add the new symbol. So, we have uh, say currently a j a j plus 1 a j plus m minus 1 a j plus m. This is the the number corresponding to this is the x to start with here. We remove the contribution of this, multiply this by d and then we add this. So, now we have the new value of uh, which is actually n j plus 1. Uh, once again I will compute mod q. At this point, Oh yes, yes. Uh, we have to raise this by d, this whole thing times d and plus this and then again mod q. So, maybe I will, I will just rewrite this. Uh, Let us just write down here. So, we have this while loop and x is uh, x minus a j times d power m minus 1 mod q. Mod q d and then again uh, we are going to compute modulo q and at the end we are going to add a j plus m. Now, we have the number. So, we are checking if x is equal to n p prime. Now, this is the place where we are uncertain. If they are equal, then we will explicitly go and check whether the two patterns are equal. Okay. Then check whether p is identical with the string a uh, j plus 1 through a j plus n. If yes, then print j, j plus 1. Now, that is the position from where the text string matches with the pattern string. Otherwise, we have to just move on and in this case, we are going to update the uh, index j to j plus 1. Now, one more thing that we have to do since we are using the flag. So, we are going to also set the flag to be true. Now, this is all there is, there is nothing more to do. We will continue to check and now the time is to, to look at the two issues here. First, what is the complexity? Second is, how do we decide 
the value of q. Well, let me make some assumptions. We assume one that all and we will have to justify this later on that all arithmetic operations all arithmetic operations can be performed in order one time. Now, that is possible if we ensure that every number that occurs in the computation is within the representation range of the given machine. Okay. There is another assumption we will make and that is the following that when we are reading see you are given a text string in some some unknown symbol set which is not necessarily um, associated with any kind of integer hence we will have to make a map from each symbol to the corresponding digit in base d now of course there is one remark that i got to make here is that uh, and that base d uh, uh, computation could be done in any other base. Normally, we do our computation in either base 10, base 2, base 8, base 16, that does not matter. But the time to compute to, to read a symbol and determine the corresponding numerical value, I assume that takes order one time. So, we say that the time to read a symbol and to determine the corresponding numerical value takes order 1 time. So, these are the two assumptions. In case you do not agree with this assumption, then obviously, this is going to take order log of the number of symbols that we have, because it will take us to determine what symbol is this and then converting that into the corresponding number. So, that is not a problem. So, subject to these assumptions, it will take us a unit time to compute the next value of x and the time complexity will be one unit of time for computation of each successive value of x. So, we will be spending n plus m unit of time m for initial computation of n p prime and n 0 prime subsequently for every position actually it will be n minus m plus 1, but then we have an additional cost to pay. Remember every time there is a false alarm, we will do, be doing a complete uh, check of the two patterns and finally, when we have a correct sim, uh, signal, then again we will be doing a uh, complete check. So, suppose there are uh, f false alarms and at most one correct indication. So, this, that many times we are going to perform a complete comparison of p with the current symbol sequence and that takes order m time. So, we have 
this is the price we have to pay. So, the worst case time complexity, worst case complexity will be one in which f happens order n times. So, we will end up with order n times n. But what is the expected time complexity? Recall that we have noticed that if our pattern is random or not particularly biased, then there is only one in q chances that we will have a false alarm. So, the number of times that we will have false alarm will be only 1 over q times n. So, that says that the expected time complexity will be order n plus m plus n over q times n. So, it is very clear that our objective is to work with as large a q as possible. So, the next question is that how do we, how to determine q. Now, what you notice is in our algorithm, we were reduced after every arithmetic operation, we were reducing the given number within the range of 0 to q minus 1 by doing modulo q op computation. After each uh, uh, arithmetic operation, we are doing modulo q. So, every time a number that we were dealing with was in this range, but the uh, op the computations that we were doing apart from one special case, which I will I'll point out later is that suppose we have a number x and a number y both in this range, then tentatively we are going to generate a number of the order of q square. If you are doing a, a sum or subtraction, we are going to generate a number of the size 2 q and that will be the largest position up to which it is going to rise. The uh, There was one place where we were actually computing d to the power m minus 1, we had uh, we had actually let me, we had some a j times this and then mod q. Now, notice that such a number can be pre computed. We can compute d power m minus 1 mod q a priori. Hence, without any problem, we can assume this is also a number within q. So, the the numbers that we are going to be dealing with will be, but, but one more no thing that one observes is that the only place we are going to do multiplication is where we are having uh, the second number to be d. So, this is actually not going to be q square, but it will be q times d, d is smaller than q, well in case it is but it cannot exceed q, because even d will be reduced. So, the largest number that we have in the process is q times d. So, we should choose, so choose q to be approximately n max divided by d. The largest number representable in your system divided by d would be the largest number that we 
can take as q, because at that time the numbers that will emerge will be within the representation range. So, that completes our basic algorithm. The only thing now I will do is I will give you one method by which we can improve the the possibility or reduce the possibility of false alarms. So, how to how to reduce false alarms? Well, we know that the best way to do that is by increasing the value of q, but we have limitations we have already seen that we cannot take q to be bigger than this, because all our computations must be done uh, in such a way that all numbers that emerge in the during the computation are within the representation range. So, what we could do is the following. Let us say we perform the entire computation. So, we, we do entire computation with respect to a q 1, we also perform the computation with respect to another number q 2. Instead of taking one q, we are going to take two such numbers. We will compute everything with respect to q 1, we will do the same thing with respect to q 2. And only when we have a match here as well as here. So, we have over here n p prime equal to n s prime, this is with respect to q and we also have n p double prime equal to n s double prime. Note that these are computed using q 2. Well, when both happen, then only I am going to perform the explicit check whether the pattern string matches with the the text string starting at position s. Well, that should improve the situation, because what is the chance that uh, this and this both happen? Well, on the face of it, we might say all right, we have only 1 over q 1 chance here, and if the number is q 2 is also chosen in such a way that there is no, no correlation, then we have uh, further reduce the probability of uh, collision. But to be precise, how many numbers are both divisible by both q 1 and q 2. Okay. So, we, we happen to have, see what, what is it that we are trying to avoid? We are saying that whenever q 1 divides n s minus p, we are going to have a false alarm when this is not a 0 number. But with two such numbers, we want this and this. This indicates that q 1 divides this number, this says q 2 divides the same number. So, both these should divide, then only we will have uh, n p prime equal to n s prime. So, the possibility that will happen is when this number is divisible by the LCM of the two numbers. So, this is equivalent to, to the fact that LCM of q 1 and q 2 divides n s minus n. In case you choose them to be co prime, 
that is their G C D is 1, then this is nothing but Q 1 times Q 2. What has happened? Effectively, by doing this work with two numbers, I am upgrading my Q to LCM of LCM of Q 1 and Q 2, which could by a wise choice of the two numbers, which could be Q 1 times Q 2. Remember that we were not in a position to choose large number because of our restrictions, but this technique can effectively give the same advantage as a number as large as this by taking. So, we generalize our method by taking not 1, but say t of these numbers q 1 through q t. We will be computing every number with respect to each of these numbers. So, the time for every successive numbers computation will be n plus m times t plus whatever is our number of false alarms that into m, because this is the cost of explicit comparison of the two patterns. So, this is our new cost, which in the worst case again well is a, a order n plus n times t plus m n. Well, we need not take t too large so that this exceeds this. But on the other hand, when uh, we look at the expectation value, expected cost will be order n plus m t plus n times m by L C M of Q 1 uh, Q T. So, one has to carefully choose T such that uh, this is not too large, the two terms are comparable effectively that will give us the best uh, result. Okay. So, that completes the discussion of uh, Rabin Karp's algorithm.